What's good, my kings and queens? It's so good to be back behind the microphone. Welcome, welcome. The first episode and season premiere of Stand Up, a safe platform for the culture, by the culture. We are sharing tips and knowledge on black health and wealth, uplifting the black community. I'm your host, Danny Royce, and I'm joined by my co-host, Michael Houston. Hello, 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 hello. Houston in the house. house. <laughs> Houston. <laughs> And you know we we have a great uh, episode today because we are joined by the lovely, the queen, multi-talented, multifaceted, okay, Shanti Lowry. What's good, girl? Hey, hey. How you everything, doing? Everything, is good, right? everything, mm-hmm. everything is good. Everything. I love. Everything is good. I love that response. Yeah. She's a fire sign. She's an Aries. I'm a very fire <laughs> sign. I learned. I'm mm-hmm. not like really up on all of that, but I learned that I'm like fire on fire with a little bit of fire. With a little bit there more fire. Hey, that's me. There we go. <laughs> I love in the hair though. Yeah. That, that. Thank you. How long did it take to do that? Mark, like. You know, it's actually really easy. Um, this is my hair is like in individual braids, and then these are just added. Oh, ah, so, okay. Like, you know. All right. A little sneak peek. Well, I'm, lo- I'm um, loving the crown. Yeah, it's easy. I have a daughter, so you know, exactly. I, I want to look cute, but I don't want to spend a lot of time doing it. Right. right. And I also want my hair not to break off, y'all. It's been a minute since right. I've interviewed you. I was going to say, do you want to just take it? <laughs> I, know, you know I, got, I know her very well. Yeah, I'll just take it from here now. Um, um, but yeah, just start off with, uh, yeah, with yeah, the shower. Uh, mm-hmm. Born and raised in Boulder, Colorado. Hey, hey. So very far from Los Angeles. Mm. And... Uh, born to like an outdoor family you know like we I was a river guide that was my first job Um, and I was a dance teacher because in Colorado I always knew that I had like a creative artistic bone Mm. and I did everything I could there I did plays um, little tiny regional commercials things Mm. like that but I just I knew I wanted to do something bigger and more creative so I started with dance and dance brought me to Los Angeles I ended up like um, Touring with Earth, Wind, and Fire. I always pause before I say that. Hey, why are you pause? <laughs> okay. EWF. Come on, right? well, let's go. Not everybody knows them, and it makes me sound like I'm like maybe 175 years old. Who doesn't know Earth, Wind, and Fire? Yeah, everyone in this room knows okay. EWF. Okay. Uh, yeah, I toured with Earth, Wind, and Fire internationally yeah. when I was 17. That's wow. So that was an experience, and that really like was being thrown into the fire, truly. Um, and then I ended up dancing with NSYNC. Another mm-hmm. old group, in sync. Yeah, Love and I, it. I was a dancer out here for a long time, um, and I, I moved to Los Angeles instead of moving to New York to pursue dance because I always knew I wanted to be an actor, and it felt like mm. this was the more direct connection to that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, dance and, and singing and acting and creating have literally always been in my body, um, but I didn't move out here until I was seventeen, and and I just jumped into everything. You've I been, started with dance, though. You started with dance, yeah. yeah. So you've been out in LA since you were 17. I don't yeah, know if I yeah. knew that. Yeah. See, I'm learning stuff you new learned already. Something right? new. <laughs> yeah. already. W- would you say uh, being a river guide, that was mm. your first, I guess, foray into entertaining people? Do you know what's so funny? It mm. literally was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was, so my mom was a river guide mm. and it was a great job for her because she was also a public school teacher. Right. So she would teach during the year and then during the summer she would do a couple of river trips to number one, make a little extra money, but mm. also she could bring her kids. It right. was like a vacation mm. that she was paid to do. Um, but we had to act just right. You know what I mean? It was like, there'll be no complaining. There'll be no crying. There'll be no needing me at all because I'm working, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it was like, I needed to, I needed to pull my weight and do something. And I was an entertainer. So that's what I did. I would sing and dance for people and they would pay me to, (laughs) to sing Little Bunny Foo Foo. That was my first, (laughs) that was my first thing. I don't even remember remember it. It was something like this, y'all. And I would get a dollar per time. And I ended up one, one of the trips, I made more in tips than my mom made in tips just what? by singing Little Bunny Foo Foo. Wow. So truly, I, that was my first foray into entertainment. I mean, Come on you know, it. as an actor, you know, you can you can make a lot just yeah. by going to stand and sitting right there, you know? Yeah. It's like, all right, we're done with you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you but know yeah. what I actually learned? This is true. You can make a lot of money just by working hard mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. they would tell me every time you go down to the boat and you grab something, if you grab me a soda, I'll give you a dollar. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Mm-hmm. Down go. the boat. 
back up, down to the bone, back up. Nice. You know, like every time you sing Little Bunny Foo Foo, <clears throat> get me some water because right. I'm going to sing it nonstop. So I did learn to work really hard in those moments, you That's know? That's what's up. Yeah. Wow. Um, your black experience, obviously, growing up is, yeah. um, was Different. not typical, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so talk to us a little bit about that uh, and how it was stepping into the entertainment industry in this industry as um, a mixed race. Right. As a mixed race woman is um, a little, it's not the right term because it's not really what's inside of me, it's mm -hmm. what I'm perceived by the outside world to be mm -hmm. and where I was raised that kind of influenced me more, right? Mm -hmm. And that is, I was raised in an all white town. I was the only person of color in my school, wow. my brother and I. So to me, my black experience, even though I look very light-skinned and mm -hmm. I look like maybe I had a different experience than some people, which mm -hmm. I did, right. um, I was as black as black to those people. Like yeah, that's yeah. who, I was the, the black kid in school. Mm -hmm. um, and I was also the only. So in a weird way, it was a, it was a strange experience because everything to do with my blackness was considered bad. Mm -hmm. And I had to fight that my whole life, right? Like if you're around all white kids and your hair looks like mine did, yeah, right. with a mother who, truly, my mother is my hero, and I think she's the most incredible person in the world, but she's white, yeah. and mm -hmm. she had no idea what to do with my hair. <laughs> right. So I just had dry, frizzy, crazy hair yeah. that was like, yeah. you know, a kid, like you look cute, right. but I didn't look cute. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I didn't fit in, in any mm. way, you know? And so that was another tick on my, my blackness, is right. what didn't fit in, right? So when I moved to Los Angeles, it was such a wake-up call for so many things because I thought I loved myself. I thought I accepted myself because mm. my mother is a fierce, strong, independent woman who taught me to love myself. And, um, But I didn't realize how much hatred I had for things based on the way other people saw me. Mm -hmm. wow. So when I moved here, there was a lot of healing and a lot of adjusting because I realized that people here see me differently. Mm. You know, people here saw me as like a stuck up, you think you're light skin, you think you're better than me mm. for a moment, right? Yeah. That was a big adjustment because I didn't think I was better than anybody. Mm. Um, no, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it, was just, it was just weird. And it's so interesting that you ask how I found my footing in the industry because it was more about just finding my footing within myself mm, first. Right, and I'm still finding that footing in the industry because I am a mixed race woman. Mm. I did grow up in Colorado. Um, mm. That's just who I am. I didn't grow up where you want me to have grown up and I don't speak the way you want me to. Like, this is my black right, experience. Right, exactly. um, but it is a valid experience as well. And uh, it's always interesting when you go into a room with filmmakers, who they want you to be versus who you are is, is they judge that already. It's yeah. not even about your acting, right? It's like, yeah. let me just show you what I can do with this character, but they already want to know who you are personally. Right, right. That's so true. It's very interesting. And it's changing and it's adjusting the way everything does. Mm. Um, and I am changing and adjusting. Right. And, and I think we always will. I don't think that that will ever just go away. I don't think there will ever be a time where it's like, oh, you're an actress. Mm -hmm. I will always be an actress of color, exactly. unfortunately. Right. right. Or maybe fortunately. I, that's just, they, I, I don't think it's, it. yeah, it's yeah. not fortunate or unfortunate. It's and just you fact. said you went on tour at 17 with Earth, Wind & Fire. So yeah. Earth, Wind & Fire is obviously like quintessential yeah. black, yeah. you know, music experience yeah. in our community. Yeah. Was that, how was that working with them and, you know, that whole black excellence right there. How did you view yourself within that? That was really a hard experience. Um, mm. I was too young to be doing it. Mm. I didn't realize that. That was kind of in that same, I thought I knew myself. I thought I loved myself. I thought I was mature. I, I graduated when I was just barely um, 16. Mm. So I, in my head, I was advanced. I was an adult and I was ready. Um, and I also loved Earth, Wind & Fire's music. Like mm. everything about that seemed like a dream job. Right. But then I got into it and realized that um, tour culture is its own thing. It's right. got its own vibe that I was not ready for. Um, they didn't love me who I was. I didn't fit into their tour culture and what they wanted, mm. um, both age-wise and culture-wise. Mm. Um, and it was so hard because they were idols and people that I really 
I wouldn't say I looked up to them. Like I didn't have posters of Earth, Wind, and Fire on right. my walls, mm -hmm. but I knew every knew lyric. Yeah, yeah, I knew yeah, every yeah. lyric. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I can't listen to the music anymore. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Still. Wow. Yeah. Okay, let's play some uh, September. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> I'll yeah. Play. Yeah, it well, plays I, a lot. Wow. Um, so I do want to touch uh, a little bit on your family, your beautiful mm. family, oh, wow. Anthony yeah. and Alora. Yeah. Um, uh, Anthony is amazing. Isn't he? He's, he is. He's such an amazing guy. He is. Um, I I think I've had a, probably like a thirty minute conversation with him, and it's just like I feel like I know him for, yeah. for, forever. Mm. Um, That's a very common thing people say. Yeah, wow. it really is. It's an ability. He it has. is an ability. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Um, just tell us a little bit how you two met, um, and for Alora, how you see and you want her future to be also as a mixed uh, race um, woman that she would grow into. She's like, going to be a woman. Oh, my God. She's and, eight months I old. Also, <laughs> so on this show, like, also, I don't know where you two stand, but um, so I use the term mixed race as, so people can understand, but I don't believe in multiple races. There's only one race, and that's the human race. Human race. Uh, <clears throat> um, but we all have differences, and yeah. we do want to convey it in a way that people will understand. So Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay, yes, I'm, I'm married to the most wonderful man in the world, and that's true. We've been married for 18 years. Wow. I know. That's and I, we wow. also no. have an eight-month-old baby, which is also crazy. <laughs> um, and he's incredible. We met through friends when we were very young, and that scared me because my mother was always like, do you, make sure you know what you want and go after it and none of this boyfriend, husband, mm. ha that'll happen. Mm -hmm. So here I am 19 years old trying to be a good girl and I met like this amazing man and I'm like, oh, no, go away, you know, like I got <laughs> things I want to do. Um, so we just kind of agreed like we're going to do the things we want to do, we're just going to do it together. We're going to get married and we're still going to pursue our life but, you know, we're just going to do it together and mm. we did. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we realized like, we wanted to have a baby. We had never not wanted to, but we just realized that it was something that we wanted to actually like pursue and make sure that it happened. Right. So I've been very open um, with the fact that we ended up having to go through IVF mm -hmm. and I will continue to be open about it because there are just so many people who are struggling with these issues right. and, and not talking about it. And it's so painful and isolating. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to be. So, right. yeah, we went through IVF. It was hard. Mm. Um, and it was so worth it. We yeah. have a beautiful little girl. She is. She's, <laughs> she's just like the light of my life, of course. Wow. Um, but I do think about things all the time differently because I have a daughter um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this crazy world. Yeah. She is mixed race. Right now, she's so light and yeah. white looking. Like, it's crazy. She's growing to a melon. Yeah. Yeah. I think she is. She is. That's what I look like, too. She's growing to a melon. Um, but I think about that all the time. Like, what world are we leaving behind for this beautiful little mixed race girl yeah. who's, yeah. who's going to grow up not understanding why she's any different right. and why you should treat her any differently? Mm. Um, I'm going to get emotional because it's really hard. I don't yeah. have an answer for that. Yeah. I don't know why we're going backwards, why we're mm. starting to treat women like, you know, we don't belong or we don't have rights. Like right. it's the most, like it's the most basic thing to say it like that. That's exactly what we're doing. We are taking rights, stripping rights from mm. women for no reason. Right. Um, and I don't know when that's going to stop. Right. I feel very lucky to live where I live, but I don't think that state borders are going to stop this nonsense exactly. forever. So I, I get scared. Um, I get scared for how she'll identify and how people will identify her. Right. Um, I have weird thoughts like, I hope she's not embarrassed of me, embarrassed mm. to be a, a black woman sometimes. Mm. Um, because she's so light, that's not a thought I ever thought I would have. Right. Um, so it's bringing up like lots of, of interesting things in me, being a mother, for sure. Do you have those conversations with your husband, with Anthony? Oh, absolutely. Like how was, how, how are yeah. those conversations like had between y'all? Like, do you find that because of his uh, experience, his own personal experience in life, does he relate to you in a certain way? Or does he understand some of your thoughts? You know, the beautiful thing about Anthony is, is like you said, he has this ability to empathize mm. and truly like put himself in that position and make you feel like he understands. Mm. Um, and so there's no way 
that he can understand my experience, right? right? But we have been together for 21 years, and he certainly has seen some horrible things that, you know, like we've been not served in restaurants before together. Mm -hmm. um, we wow. have been kicked out of, of hotels. We mm -hmm. have been asked to move from places, you know, like we, we, have, we have experienced these things together, but what I appreciate is he always is like, we experienced that together, but that was about you. Like mm -hmm. I'll deal with my feelings on that in a second, but how are you? Like he's right. always very careful to understand that he will never be able to, to really feel what it is like to be right. ostracized because of what you look like. Right. So with that said, my mom never understood until you understand. Mm -hmm. Until I came home when I was five years old and told her they wouldn't let me play with them on the playground and they called me a nigger mm -hmm. and they told me to go back to Africa. What, what is that about? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. That's when I saw it in my mother's eyes. It wasn't her daughter experienced racism that was personal to her she mm. finally felt that because wow. her you know she had to explain something that was so awful to her daughter that was happening because you know it was terrible and i think that that is where we're getting with my husband he is he is empathized with these situations but i think when it is your blood mm -hmm. the first time that she has a moment of realizing she's different or realizing mommy is different mm. or realizing someone is treating her differently I think that's when it's going to hit Anthony in a different way. Wow. Um, and I feel bad because it's going to be painful. Yeah, right. Um, but he's ready. We have these conversations all the time. Mm. I tell him all these crazy thoughts like, oh, what if she's embarrassed of me? And he's mm. like, like, that's so silly. You know, <laughs> yeah. she's going to be in love with you. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important to say these things because as the black community, we have these things we're allowed to talk about and things we're allowed to feel. Mm -hmm. And then all of this gray. Right. And this is one of those gray things. Like I am a, I am considered a black actress. I am a black woman to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, my mother is white, though. You mm -hmm. know, my daughter is looks white. These mm -hmm. are just truths of my black reality. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. definitely agree. And it's, it's interesting um, because yeah, we should definitely have those talks, and that's another reason why this platform exists here. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I believe we spoke before on it, and I have a similar experience because I was taken out of like a, a, a black community as a young mm -hmm. child, like around five and placed into all white. So it was just yeah. a cultural shock for one, but also, you know, you get called Oreo because you're not black enough and you get called something else. Mm -hmm. Zebra, you know, and you know, Oreo. Zebra. It's yeah. all the things, you know. Yeah. Um, but yes, I think those conversations are amazing to have and they yeah. need to be had. Mm -hmm. And black folks, Let's let's treat each other like come on like yeah. royalty like we are we yeah. all are different I mean we're all mixed with some stuff you know right. <laughs> the slavery most likely so I mean and wouldn't you be more insulted in fact I know you would we talk about appropriation all the time I think you would be more insulted if I walked up here and I was like yo 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 what's up what's up right. like yeah. that's not me I'm like right. what are you doing right, <laughs> right. Like, right. speak for yourself yeah 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 I just sure. wish that the black community would be open to all black experiences like yeah. that. And I think it actually is it a is, lot. Right. Um, for the most part. For, yeah. We're, we're all opening and learning. Exactly. That's life. Right. Uh, real quick, I want yeah. to talk about uh, the game reboot. Mm -hmm. Do you watch it? And why didn't they bring back the mm -hmm. I do watch it. I love it. I love Wendy and I love Hosea. Um, and I love Mara, who mm -hmm. created the game, truly. I think she's like a genius and a gift to our community and our, actually, to the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I was not asked to come back on the first season. And um, my, my team reached out and was just like, I love the show. I would love to come back and play Dion. And they mm -hmm. said, yeah, great. We would love to have you. Did but I haven't heard it. So wow. <laughs> I don't know. That's just the truth. I am yeah. not going to lie about it. I, right. would, I would love to go back. I actually think that Dion deserves a yeah, good ending, sure. too. Mm -hmm. Um, as an actor, sometimes you get attached to your characters yeah. and she's one that I'm, I love her. I think she was misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I think she didn't get her due. Um, and I, I think she, they should bring her back. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Bring back Dion. Bring back Dion. <laughs> <laughs> any upcoming projects or, um, uh, any projects in the future? I was going to ask you product? the same thing, sir. Do you have an upcoming project uh, that you want to talk about? Oh, uh, which one? <laughs> um, because I say this because last night I viewed <laughs> the rough cuts. 
Nice. And you were wonderful. Oh, thank you. I made a Christmas thank movie. For, thank you for having oh me. Oh my God, absolutely. <laughs> um, I made a Christmas movie mm. right after having my daughter yeah. and it was awesome. It was mm. such a great experience, but it was hard. Mm -hmm. um, and I uh, invited this guy to be in it and he's wonderful. It's so check out Christmas at the Porters coming yes. this Christmas and check out him in a hey. wonderful cameo. You're really funny. Thank you. Really, really funny. Hey, there we go. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so that movie is coming, Christmas mm. at the Porters. It's with Joe Marie Payton. Yes. I mean, oh, it's been amazing. a minute since you've mm. seen her. You want to see a, her you again. You definitely want to see yeah. her. Where, where can we watch it at? Um, that, I can't say yet. Okay. Um, I will let you guys know. Maybe by the time this comes out, we can, we can right. let you right. know. But it will be this Christmas. Come and. Um, yeah, Buddy Lewis, Katie Aubert. Mm -hmm. Katie Aubert, Awesome. Yeah. She's hilarious. <laughs> she, it's so nice to have her back, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you've missed her. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, it's going to be a really fun movie. I'm excited. And then the bigger news is that was my first um, movie under my production company. That hey. Exactly. I started hey. just after having my daughter. Come on. And it's a family business. My husband is the other executive. Nice. And we have, so we did one movie last mm -hmm. year. It's awesome. I think it's going to be great. OK. We have four movies wow. slated for this coming four year. Movies. Yeah. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. I'm, I'm really excited just because you know how it is in this industry, sitting around waiting for other people oh, yeah. to tell stories that involve you. Mm -hmm. You could wait all day. Right, um, and then when they do make those stories, then they invite people from outside the community to play them or to mm -hmm. do them or, you know, it, it's, you have to create your own content these days. And um, creating, just creating, like just writing it or mm -hmm. just directing it, you got to do the whole thing. That's right. how I feel. So I created an entire company and we're going to produce movies top to bottom. Mm -hmm. um, I think eventually I'd like to open a studio to actually be able to film in and have right. my own locations. Right. I think you can get a lot more done. Um, and I just feel like 2023 is the year of like not waiting for anyone else to mm -hmm. ever call me no. ever, ever again. Jordan. That's so funny that you, you that you mentioned that yeah. in creating your own and coming into this space or we're in this age where it's like, I'm not waiting for anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm producing my one man show. Yeah. And at first, it was just going to be a birthday thing for me because I never really cele celebrated my birthday or anything. Yeah. But then it started to grow into this this passion of I'm doing my own stuff. Right. There's this weird need that begins, and I'm sure we all experienced it, for actors like, I got to get an agent. I got to get a manager. I got to get this, that, and a third. And it's this begging quality mm. that I began to discover developing it in myself and I'm like I don't like that no that desperation no. that almost that's yeah that desperate especially graduating right out of school mm. you know these these this thing they kind of implant in your mind yeah. and then after a while just like nah I'm just gonna create my own you right. know and have all that stuff come to me well it's because that's what they teach you in school because mm -hmm. school has to teach you something right they have right. to say you want to get from here to here these are the steps to get there mm -hmm. but those are the old steps to get right. there. Those are the steps that somebody else paved the way, right? Mm -hmm. But the entire industry is so different that even those people who are telling you what to do and what not to do, they don't know what they're talking about right. anymore. And it's right. not to be mean. Nobody knows what they're talking about mm -hmm. anymore right. no. because the industry is upside down. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be Sony to make even a $30 million movie or even to win an Academy Award. Right. You don't need to do it the way that it's been done. Right. So you don't need an agent and then a manager mm -hmm. and then a publicist and then a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You could just do it on your own. Yeah, and right. and you could be Issa Rae and be like, you know what, I'm gonna do my own one woman show and yeah. then I'm gonna produce my, she didn't, actually I have no idea if she did it the traditional way before that. <laughs> but like that is a way yeah. that you can do it as well. And I actually think the more interesting ways of getting out there are becoming more popular yeah. and succeeding more because the the market is just different you know right. like it used to be you had to do like five auditions to get a part right. now they don't want to see you because of covid exactly. right. so it's like one <laughs> taped tape audition tape. yeah right. one meeting and one meeting yeah that's just one example of how big the changes the change. are you right. know and right. it's it's all across the board now the streaming like mm -hmm. there are more streamers than we even know right it's crazy Walmart's yeah. streaming now they, they're they coming that. over the network yeah they have wow. a network really it's crazy yeah oh my god it's wow. insane but it's just like we were talking about earlier with Alora. um you know just 
if there if there is no one to break the barriers, then things will not get done differently. Right. Yeah. So you know, just continue to do things outside of the box, mm. and that will pave it for the people that come um, after us. I sure um, hope so. <laughs> yes, as much as we can. Yeah. So, uh, USC. Yeah. There uh, has been some discussions about the majorette team that was just newly formed by I believe she's a freshman and there has been outcry from a lot of uh hbcu students and alumni and other black people um in which they feel as though it's been quote-unquote appropriated in the sense that majorette is a strong part of hbcu history I see. which we all know and all understand but my point is that this USC major team, one, it is all black. I could understand the outcry if they added, you know, some white people in it instead of keeping true to the tradition of right. it. But they created a safe space for black women to come in a predominantly white campus in which they can perform, dance, and keep true to that tradition. So how do you feel about the outcry? Do you Gosh. feel like it should be just HBCU or... It can be anywhere. No, I, mm -hmm. I'm so one of these people. I don't understand always, oh, not always, mm -hmm. this argument about appropriation. Mm -hmm. The world is about culture. And my favorite thing to do is to travel and experience mm -hmm. yes. other cultures. Right. When I go to Ireland, I don't sit and have a Coke. <laughs> I have a Guinness. Right. Yeah. I, I sit down. I sit like them. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is how they do it. You're out in the field, you know. You try and immerse yourself in those cultures, and mm. I don't ever... Actually, that's not true. In, in Ireland, they can be a little racist, and they can yeah. be a little nasty yeah. to you. <laughs> but true. There's, there's in true. my opinion, there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. Right. I'm not appropriating Irish culture. I'm trying on Irish customs. Mm -hmm. I am, you know, seeing how that feels. And as long as it's done with respect, I, I honestly just don't see anything wrong with it. I think the same with hair, though. You know, like... Black women have been forced to straighten their hair for years. Mm. And I do say forced because if you go to certain jobs, they will right. literally yeah. force you right. to, to change your hair mm -hmm. to look more Caucasian. Mm -hmm. So then I don't understand why we are then angry at white women who are like, well, let me try your style on and see how that feels. Mm. I do understand black women saying it's super unfair when a white girl does it and it's beautiful and it's mm. sexy and it's hot and you can wear it to work. Right. But when a black girl does it, girl, get your hair done. Right. Right. I get that. Mm. Those are the conversations that I'm on board with. I just have never been a fan of this appropriation nonsense because that's what I think it is. I mm. think the conversation is different. It's about how people appropriate, but I don't think there's anything wrong with trying on people's customs and cultures and, and enjoying them. Right. So in my opinion, I'm so happy that they are bringing that cultural element from an HBCU and sharing that with these USC white kids who wouldn't otherwise get to see it. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like if you've ever had a chance to go see the Harlem Ballet in mm -hmm. New York, mm -hmm. oh my, it's an experience and everybody deserves to have it. Like your body tingles, it's just different. Right. That's how it is for some white people if they've never seen a drill team or step dance mm -hmm. or um, majorette dancing, like mm -hmm. it's an experience and it's, they deserve to be able to see it, I think. And I also don't, this is going to get me in trouble. I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> I don't think it should just be an all black team. I think mm -hmm. if there was a white girl who was like living it, feeling it, mm -hmm. why wouldn't she be allowed to be on it? The black girls, we're not keeping the black girls from the ballet team. I really hope. Right. I know that we do actually, because they don't look the part, mm -hmm. but if she was capable she should be allowed to be on the ballet team, just like if a white girl was capable of actually finding that rhythm and that beat, <laughs> right. she should be on the drill team. But that I know is an unpopular opinion. And I do understand the other side of it because black women are so often ostracized and then you take that exact thing they're ostracized for and you give it to another exactly. um, right. cultural, there's someone else um, mm. presence and they are- It's glamorified. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I do understand that. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's an interesting conversation for sure. What are your thoughts on it? Did you feel like it should just be HBCUs? Um, I mean, honestly, I don't. Uh, I say that only because we're, we're in a situation, we're actually in, in an experience, I would say, where we're moving forward mm -hmm. and moving backward at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but in that aspect, I think 
incorporating people just from all over yeah would just magnify it even more um you look around the world you notice when we come together magic happens Mm -hmm. um so you know i do understand the other part like you said i do understand that um it's just at this point, we're heading in a different direction. I'm all about supporting blackness, uh, black excellence, yeah. lifting us up. Um, but there are certain things where we can bend, and there's certain things where we can we can welcome. Others. I was gonna say not even bend, but just open our arms. Open our arms, yeah, right? That's, that's exactly. Yeah. And welcome others. Welcome you know? others. Um, when it comes to things like banks and stuff, that's when we need to hold our own. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's just different things, <laughs> yeah. you know, that yeah. uh, they have different conversations. Oh. But uh, speaking of that, I want to move on to our sponsor statement. Uh, this episode sponsored by Push Black. If you haven't heard of them, you should definitely get on it. We are Push Black. Um, they update uh, the audience that was created as a unique space to focus um, on the intersection of news and history. We update our audience on news most relevant to black people worldwide using a historical lens to give each story its proper context. We identify the repetition of historical trends and share lessons from the past that people can use as they work to strengthen their community today. With more than 9 million monthly readers, we're working towards the goal of building the largest online community of black Americans. Through daily communications on text and Facebook Messenger, we are literally putting power in the hands of the people. This has made us the premier mobile source of information and action for black folks around the country. We push hard, we push forward, we push black. So that's, we are Push Black. Definitely take a look, um, search them. You can go to pushblack.us. Uh, um, they're taking donations. All this stuff they're doing is totally free. You know, they're doing it all off of donations and they, wow. they share some really amazing, powerful stories. Yeah. Uh, speaking of a story that I want to talk about just uh, shortly, because you are a mother, um, yeah. and the, the woman's womb is sacred and should be defended at all costs. Mm-hmm. That was actually a quote by um, uh, Louis Farrakhan. Wow. Yes. Mm-hmm. So wow. I'm going to read that again. The woman's womb is sacred and should be defended at all costs. So I want to talk a little bit about Fannie Lou Hammer. I don't know if you guys mm. know about her, um, but she has a story that a lot of people don't know um, and should be told more. Um, she went to actually get a fibroid removed from her uterus. Mm-hmm. They ended up removing her entire uterus, leaving her unable to have children. It was called a Mississippi appendectomy and uh, slang for giving black women unnecessary and unconsensual hysterectomies. Mm -hmm. Uh, These procedures were meant to curtail the black population, but for Hammer, this violation for her body led to another effect. So she ended up uh, adopting two girls of her own. Uh, She got trained in community organizing and voting rights, and she really pushed for women's rights, um, even though her organs were stolen and assumably uh, sold. She fought with all that she had, giving um, the generations behind her hope and pushing forward to a lot of women rights uh, that are today that a lot of people around the world are benefiting from right. started with Fannie Lou Hammer. Isn't that just disgusting? And it's also really crazy because you hear that, right? And you go, oh my God, that happened, you know, back then. Right. Mm-hmm. That was still happening. It probably still is. It probably still is, yeah. That was still happening not that long ago, five, ten years ago in prisons. Um, Mm -hmm. And Mm. I just, again, I don't know what to say about this. Like, how is it that someone over there has any right to tell me what to do with my body? I just don't understand it. We have no equivalent to men. Mm, There is no equivalent. That I just, I don't really have words for it because to me it's kind of so ridiculous, you mm-hmm. know? I don't even want to discuss whether I am personally pro-life, pro-abortion. Pro, I'm pro, this is my body. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, this I'm, is my choice. Yeah. I really don't know why you think you have any right to tell me about it. Right, right. But it just, it's scary, the, the trend. Do it's you really have scary. those, well, I know you say your husband, he balances you out in terms yes. of your thoughts and stuff, but with your daughter... You know, again, growing in this world and all the things that we're experiencing, do you have like, I don't know, uh, 
like a list of things you think you want to talk about or at, at a certain age so you can introduce these ideas or like how do you as a parent especially first time parent how do you cope with that I don't have a list and I don't yeah. have a time I have you know I'm gonna have a, a real relationship with my daughter mm. and I'm just gonna be honest and yeah. I don't think there's ever a time when you start being honest I mm. think you're just honest from the truth from the beginning right you maybe right. don't have to be so blunt, like, right, yeah, right. racism, it's right. the worst. Right. <laughs> you know? um, but like, you, you don't, you don't need to lie about it. You mm. just say, you know, it's not always fair. And sometimes people are hurtful and sometimes they don't even know why they're right. being mean. You know, um, I just think I will approach every situation with truth and honesty, because I'd rather her know the truth. I don't right. want to hide the world from her because I also think that the world is really beautiful. Yeah, yes. You know, I'm going to show her that beauty, well, not hiding the the dark spots too. Um, mm. Yeah, it's it's scary having that a daughter. Is, I will say know. this is so weird, but I feel like maybe I can't, I can't be the only person who felt this way. So I'll just say it. I wanted a baby so badly. Mm. I did IVF. The shots, the things that you go through. If you don't know somebody, ask them, mm. because it is such. It is so much. There's no way for anyone to say you maybe want a child. You obviously want that baby more than anything mm -hmm. because you're doing shots that are so painful you can't walk for five, 10 minutes and you're doing it every day for three months, right? Wow. Um, I still had a moment when I turned 26 weeks pregnant that I panicked mm -hmm. because at 26 weeks pregnant, my child is viable, which means if anything happens to me, mm -hmm. get that baby out. Wow. Don't worry about her. Get that baby out. That baby's alive. That baby can make it. Right. And that's weird because I also love my daughter more than anything. And so I understand, like, I would want her to live. But I'm mm. also me. I'm a human. I want to be cared about. I want to be thought of. Right. And so at 26 weeks pregnant, I just started crying to my husband. Like, if anything happens, like, please tell them that you love me too. Mm. Like, that you want me to survive. And I feel like that's something we just are not thinking about with women. We are not wombs no matter how much I love this baby I'm still love myself too mm -hmm. um, and that's a very strange thing but it's also like becoming very real for women when you get pregnant there's going to be this time where you are no longer a human you are a vessel right and therefore you have different rights wow that's deep that. it's love... very scary wow. because you can't love control it right no that's very wow. true. And maybe you even really want that baby, but do you want it more than being alive? I, I don't know. Right. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, we're going to be closing up the, the interview in this episode, but before we do, we have our segment, Stand Up, which is for black trivia questions. All oh, right. God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Multiple choice, okay? okay. You got this. You're going to see this. if you can earn a black card. No. Okay. <laughs> Come on, okay, Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Colorado. <laughs> All right, like question it. number one. What was Muhammad Ali's original name? Cassius Day, Cassius Clay, or Cassius May? Well, Cassius Clay. Come on. Hey, Come on. Yeah, let's go. I was going to say y'all. I was going to be like, Cassius what, Clay? All right, number two. Mm -hmm. what, which city is known as the birthplace of hip-hop? Queens, New York. Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> or the Bronx, New York. It's interesting. I don't think I've ever heard this, but I would. Mm. Gosh, is the Queens or the Bronx? I would call the Bronx. I'd be like Bronx. Hey, is the, did they get it? Yes, yeah. Yes. There we go. There we go. Uh, that okay. is considered the birthplace of yeah, hip hop. That's job. fair. <laughs> you said that, that's fair. That's fair. All right. Question three: What state was the first to elect a black governor? Doing so in 1989. Oh. All right. One, Virginia. Two. Washington, or three, Utah. Interesting. 89 really was the first black governor? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really that's, sad, y'all. It's crazy. I know right. it really is. Um, I'm going to say Virginia. Oh, oh you're good. Uh, you're yeah? Good. Yeah. yeah, nice. Oh, wow. nice 100%. Nice. All right. Last but not least, which president officially recognized Black History Month? Oh, Dear Lord, don't tell me it was like. <laughs> well, please don't make it be Trump. <laughs> 2009, y'all. Right. Sorry, no, go ahead. Was it one, Nixon, Richard Nixon? Okay. Two, JFK, 
No. Or three, Gerald Ford. I think it was Ford. Mm -hmm. I think it was because it was like in this, it was a little, mm. Yeah, I'm oh, going for it. Okay, JFK loves the black people now. No, <laughs> you know what? I don't even know if that's true. I think no, people kidding. like to pretend JFK was something he wasn't. Um, yeah, you right. know? Talk but about it. Marilyn Monroe's um, Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, did you watch yes. Blonde? That correct. was interesting. No, I didn't. I didn't yeah. Blonde's very interesting. It's not really... Based on a book, right? I was going to say, it's not a biography, right. and it's not necessarily true, but it's very mm -hmm. interesting. Actually, did I get that right again? You did. Y'all, I get my black card. You were scared. We'll mail you your black card. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, uh, thank you so much. I had yes, an thank awesome you. time. It's been great mm -hmm. sitting here talking with you again. Yes. Yes. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Of course. So it's yeah. always a pleasure when we connect. Um, thank you so much for joining us here on Stand Up. Folks, you can find me everywhere at I am Danny Royce. Also, tune in uh, for future episodes. And you can follow this uh, podcast at thestanduppodcast.com. Go ahead and tell where, where you can find me. Hey, yeah, come check me out. That's a weird thing to say. I didn't mean it Especially like that. Especially after the prostitution story. To, that, I guess, but, <laughs> no, Shanti Lowry. S-H-A-N-T-I-L-O-W-R-Y. At Shanti Lowry everywhere. Come say hi. I love talking to people. She loves her tribe, too. I do. I call her, it my village, and it village. really is oh, a village of people that I... Hopefully, you're helping me raise my daughter and raise myself. Right. Um, mm. And raise this company. I'm really yes. excited for this production company. Yes. Did we, did we More stuff. Yes. Um, I didn't because we don't have no, a name no, okay. for it yet. Um, Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah, I mean, it, it, our company is Mandalay. No. So, no. that's the restaurant that my husband and I met at a oh. few years ago. Oh, oh my God. Isn't that cute? It doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> Love. Empty yeah. Mike. Oh, yes. You know, I actually want, I'm, I'm, I want my name on, so you can find me at Life with Mike, Life dot with that Mike on Instagram. But I want my name like how you have your name on every platform. I want it just to be Michael Houston everywhere. Yeah. I'm working on that. It's but the yes. easiest way, man. Like it is. Yeah. yeah. They might have it. You might have to put like a number or something. I was gonna say your name. I don't want <laughs> it. Your name. No. So somebody it's has it, and I it. swear. So I reached out to them. They're their uh, page is private, and I'm sure because they haven't been active on Twitter and Instagram for like what since 2012 oh yeah so wow. something definitely happened fight, fight we don't that. know what yeah but okay so michael houston if you're out there like do the right thing okay <laughs> he needs it you right. could be like the michael houston the exactly. and you could be i'm the only michael there you houston go. There you go. I'm the go. only michael houston well thank you so much for joining <laughs> us on the stand up we'll see you next time stay blessed king queen yeah.